Welcome to the premieres of Panda Days 2023. I'm Eugene Shirley, co-hosting these events with my colleague, Matthew Manos. Check the Panda Days 23 web, web page to see the premiere week schedule for all 16 projects. Earlier today, we heard from Cal Arts about the magic of mushrooms for creating a more sustainable world. This evening, we're hearing from two higher ed institutions, Pierce College and Cal State Northridge. As a reminder, all 16 premiere events are recorded. These recordings, along with all project materials, will be posted on a rolling basis on each team's dedicated web page on the Panda web website. Recordings are then judged by a distinguished panel of specialists in the first quarter of the new year. Then on April 14, we gather key people from across the whole of LA County to honor some of the best of these initiatives and help move as many of them as possible forward. It's the Pando Sustainability Awards held at Caltech. So let's get going with Pierce College. This is the first year that Pierce has had a team in the Pando Days lineup and we're thrilled to have them with us. Our format is this, the team has 15 minutes for its presentation followed by 15 minutes Q&A from our panel of experts. The Pierce College team is led by Professor, by Professor Beth Abels. Pierce College is distinguished by inhabiting a 400 acre campus a mile from the headwaters of the LA River. So their project is about linking their campus together with the river for the purpose of supporting biodiversity and native plant and animal communities. Beth and team, wonderful to have you with us. Nadia Vedini, I hear you'll be the project MC this evening. Your project sounds terrific. We're eager to hear what you're up to. Please take it away. Well, first of all, hello everyone. Thank you so much um, for allowing us to be part of this amazing project. Um, we are students of ARC 201 at Pierce College with Professor Abels, and this is our presentation. Hi, I'm Beth Abels, Professor of Architecture here at Los Angeles Pierce College, and I want to talk to you a little bit about linking Pierce College campus to the Los Angeles River for the purpose of supporting biodiversity. So linking the Los Angeles River and LA Pierce College together with the intention of supporting biodiversity, native plant and animal communities, students designed small repeatable projects that local community members along the path between these two vital open spaces could duplicate. This project focuses on the development of tangible elements to support biodiversity and habitat and follows up with opportunities for dissemination, education, and maintenance. For this PANDO project, architecture students from third and fourth semester design studios were given a general prompt to come up with a design idea that would support the movement of wildlife safely between the LA River and Pierce College campus in a low cost and a doable way. Students working as a team used brainstorming and research to begin their process, initially developing a bridge and a tunnel plan, finally narrowing their focus as their ideas became more developed. This project required a tangible object and exquisite teamwork. Students developed their teamwork, problem solving and follow through skills as this project's objectives required. These skills are vital for transfer and for workplace, and they may have found this as a limited, limited as a design project, but they developed excellent problem solving skills. Students directed this project from start to finish. Faculty simply facilitated this process. So enjoy. So to start this project out, we as a group looked at the LA River and its habitats. And we had to understand the LA River and so we were really guided towards Frank Gehry's master plan on how to reinvigorate the LA River. And that led us to understanding the river a little bit better. Then we had to understand location and we know we wanted to use Pierce campus and the LA River. And so we looked at the ecosystem of that area and we had to understand the plants and the critters and the species that are involved in this specific area of the LA River. And so then we looked at the Pierce campus as a whole, has quite a lot of room at 426 acres, but they have a botanical garden, 
home to many species, many plants of the San Fernando Valley. So we looked at them as possibly a great partnership, but also just a beautiful spot in Pierce College. We tried to think big and think about maybe a nature bridge from Pierce to the LA River. We're out of budget with that. So we came up with five different ideas, uh, how to support house sparrows, how to support hummingbirds, monarch butterflies, solitary bees, and animals in the wetlands. So without further ado, here are the presentations. Hi, so I did my project for the house sparrow. They are located in the San Fernando Valley. They used to be in abundance, but now they're on the decline due to city size changes and farming changes. But they serve as a vital part of the food web and they maintain stability in urban environments. They mostly eat grain and bird seed and they build nests near each other. So that's some of the research I did on the house sparrow. My concept was really based on balance. I did some concept mapping and I wanted it to be balanced because I feel like the house sparrow really does provide balance to an ecosystem. Uh, so here was my building process. I know I wanted lightweight steel, three-fourths plywood, caulking for waterproofing, couple screws, nails, and paint. So I laid out what I wanted it to look like. Here's my video. We'll go ahead and play that. So I planted this uh, trailing plant that does really well for pollination, and I put some elevations and sections here. My client is the surrounding community, uh, hopefully reached by the, the website or the flyer. And I would like to partner with the welding students and the architecture students at Pierce. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alessandro and our research on hummingbirds led us to the research on how they are natural pollinators. They use their long slender bills and tongues to extract nectar and pick up pollen inside the flowers that they then transfer the pollen to one plant to another which ends up being a natural fertilization process. So my concept design is a cycle which is based on how hummingbirds feed on the planters and how this creates a pattern of take and give. The next slide is my process of how I came up with my design and how to build a planter at home with easy steps leading to the result. Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how to make an in-home hanging planter for the hummingbird. You will need a shoelace, a rubber band, an empty can or soda, a can opener, some scissors, and a regular piece of paper. You're going to now use the can opener to open the top part of the can very slowly so you don't leave any dents or sharp parts around the can. This makes it so the hummingbird does not get damaged in any way. Now rinse the can as much as you can with water so you can get all the remaining soda or juice out of the way. Cut that piece of paper in half and then use it to measure the can and wrap it around the can in order to get some infill. Then use that infill and place it inside the can. After you have placed your given soil and plant that we provided you, now you will use the shoelace and the rubber band for the next step. Place the rubber band around the can and then use the shoelace on it. You will tie the shoelace with knots inside the rubber band as much angle as you want or range. You can have it hanging higher or lower. And this, this is how it should look like in the end, placing it outside your hanging door for the hummingbirds or any hanging area. Western monarch butterflies numbered in the millions in the 1980s with the destruction of their milkweed habitat along their migratory route from housing expansion, they now number in just over 300,000. The increased use of farming pesticides and herbicides also have decreased their numbers. Their migration from the Pacific Northwest, sink to springtime and blossoming of wildflowers, has been drastically affected by climate change, driving the species to near extinction. Butterflies need a constant, reliable, and varied supply of food and shelter throughout their entire life cycle. Butterfly larvae need leaves and blossoms for food. 
adult butterflies need nectar and a place to lay eggs. And for monarch caterpillars, they only feed on a varied source of milkweed. We designed a lightweight planter made from rot resistant cedar and redwood that can be transported easily to a location such as a home garden, where it then can be filled with organic potting material and planted with milkweed and a nectar producing plant. Along with a refillable water tray, it provides a confined habitat to provide for the monarch and adult and the larvae to caterpillar from the eggs laid by the adult butterfly. Nectar fruiting plants and milkweed can also be provided to those who wish to plant directly into their gardens. Thank you. Step one of my project is getting my lumber to size and cutting it out with the saw. Step two would be building the planter frame and then to keep it in place using nails and a drill. Step three would be to measure the side plywood size and cutting it out to size and shape. Step four would be to use a nail gun to help keep the back pieces of plywood and side pieces of plywood in place. Step five would be to insert your two metal plywood pieces into the cuts you have made. Step six would be to nail the bottom piece of plywood in and then you have your planner. Bees are important as indicators of environmental quality. 1,600 species of native bees can be found in California. While honeybees are social living hives and cooperate with one another, most of our native bees are solitary, live in wood or underground tunnels, and do not make honey. For example, the valley carp carpenter bee. I decided to make a do-it-yourself solitary bee house. For the location and installation, it's very important that the house is mounted to a solid object, that is placed in a location facing south because bees are cold-blooded and need the morning sun to start moving. It has to be near open blooms because they only fly about 300 feet searching for nectar. And it has to be at eye level, about five feet high, to prevent from um, predators. And also in a location free of pesticides because pesticides are a primary driver of bee declines worldwide. I decided to make this project kids friendly and maybe offer it to high schools and middle schools as a summer project. I called it Recycle LA and I have a slogan. If you want grown ups to recycle, just tell their kids the importance of recycling and they'll be all over it. The summer project is to create a natural habitat for a local critter or planter using recycled material. Monitor the habitat during the course of the summer and write some observations. My material for the project was six toilet paper rolls, one paper towel, paper straws, and natural jute twine strings. Everything 100% recyclable and non-toxic. That's why I decided not to use glue. This is a sketch and also the process of the construction. Finally, we have the bee house mounted outside and a bee fountain as well because bees can swim and it's very easy to make. Just add some glass pebbles to a shallow container with some water and you'll have your bee fountain. The wetland planner is meant to mimic a wetland area in a way that its outer design can fit seamlessly within residential areas while the inner design can accommodate various species who can use it for nesting and foraging among other activities. Having a wetland planner can be beneficial to homeowners due to the pest control and pollination that is provided by many of the species who frequent. Some creatures that could benefit from these planners are pictured here, such as various species of birds, dragonflies, and frogs. Wetlands create an area for many of these animals to rest, as well as hide from the elements and keep away land-based species that may pose a threat. Our design was initially meant to be a habitat for the California red leg frog, as it is currently listed as a threatened species. Our first design was based around the idea of creating a refugee for the frogs to hide from the elements as well as predators. For our second design, we proposed a hybrid pond wetland area that could benefit a greater variety of frogs with similar behaviors. In further developing our design, we found that a wetland would benefit numerous creatures and decided to focus our design on a wetland that can cater to as many as possible. These designs and ideas are stepping stones for the Pierce College student body and the surrounding community to be a part of the Los Angeles River Revitalization Project by aiding animal life in their migration to and from this area. We believe that this project can benefit the college for years to come as an interdisciplinary activity between various departments and school clubs. 
Creating and maintaining these planters will provide many learning experiences in different fields and incentivize future students to further develop these ideas to make a greater impact. With these resources and support at the community's disposal, we believe that we can all come together and do our part in helping our native creatures and plant life. Nadia and Beth and team, thank you all so much for that presentation. I just found it wonderful. I love how you're thinking about your campus in its broader geographic context. And I love all these uh, small, you know, straightforward basic projects that are that are addressing so many needs in biodiversity and um, native habitat and what have you. I find this really inspiring. Let's bring in our team of experts and see what they think. Eager to give them uh, then the Q&A period, 15 minutes there. With us this evening, Anthony Morehouse and George Riley, both with the engineering firm Burrow Happold, one of our distinguished Panda Days sponsors. Burrow Happold, you should know, is in fact the firm that was tasked with actually authoring the LA County Sustainability Plan, the one that Panda Days projects aligned themselves with. Anthony is an engineer with Burrow Happold, who describes himself as a sustainability champion. George is also an engineer and counts among his recent projects, the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. George's passion, net zero energy. George and Anthony, thank you both so much for being with us today. Anthony, let's start with you. What is it about the Pierce College project that is most striking from a sustainability perspective? If you'd help us unpack it. Uh, yeah. Um... So looking forward, like big picture type stuff. I love the concept of Pierce College sitting at kind of a, as a way station between, I believe it was the Chatsworth Nature Reserve. And then also um, there was a, a reserve to the, to the east. I forget the exact name, but I apologize. Um, so that's actually really compelling. It seems like you guys would be pretty much prime location for, for migration and interaction between organisms along on those paths. Um, I did want to kind of touch on, uh, so all these are physical builds, right? So this is all stuff that can be created by hand or, or with a little bit of tooling. And I was curious to know if there was any sort of expertise that you feel you would benefit from that or additional resources, additional time, expertise that you would benefit from that would kind of push these projects into uh, Closer to your your end vision, your 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 original vision, or or uh, something like that, if if improving in somehow some way. My expertise, you uh, you you're referring to outside expertise help? Well, well, uh, I would say uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that you're all architecture students, or at least you're in this architecture class together. So say you had opportunity to interact with an industrial designer or uh, some sort of an ecologist. Uh, expertise along that line, do you think that you would benefit or these projects would benefit from that sort of interaction? I would well, say mine, mine would have. Um, I, I, I sorry to jump in on everyone. I know I, I had welding involved with, with my project and um, I had to get help with that because I'm not... Um, not a welder, but I know there are like um, construction uh, classes or speaking to um, uh, not structural engineers for my project, but definitely uh, a welding weld person who can weld and a welder would have been helpful for mine. Sure. Learning those sort of expertise skills. Mm -hmm. As far as my project, I think um, I have the solitary bees. So probably an ecologist um, to let me know maybe which colors are more um are are more you know be friendly or what materials or where should i mount the bee house what kind of tree would be more um you know calling for bees um or if i put any sugar in it um what kind of product could attract the bees more um, something like like that, like if I should use colors or no colors, or I already don't use anything toxic, no glue, anything, but where should I mount my bee house on a palm tree, on a banana tree? 
right. things like that could help. Um, for my design, um, we had to um, focus on, we had a uh, frog, red, red-legged frogs. So we had to design of um, what are their habitats are in their living space. So I had to do research of um, what type of temperature they like to live in and um, where they like to hide at and certain plants that they like to be around to feel more comfortable and to make a place at home. So um, I did a couple of researches on videos and to, to see as and try to design as what could be possible as their habitat to so they can feel normal and produce more. Um, so I basically had to do everything with different plants and uh, just to show like certain designs with tree branches and um, small plants and dirt and soil and um, rocks to kind of give it that, uh, to kind of give it that water, like kind of give the water a surface level so it don't have it, like that water log ish. And um, yeah, that's, that's what we just basically came and researched and talked it over with the team for uh, what could be the best design as possible to display. I was going to say for the outside help, we actually have um, in-house in a sense, in as much as Pierce College has a horticulture department and the life science department that actually is responsible for the uh, botanical garden. There would always be reference as uh, Nani referred to talking to experts, uh, nursery uh, managers who are experts in how to grow plants, the, uh, the, the soil material needed, propagation, um, all those sort of things. And then we have the availability of the Audubon Society if we wanted to refer to them specifically for a species as in Stephanie's case, the uh, the sparrows. We also were talking about uh, the local owl populations. So there's there seems to be abundance of experts to refer to on campus and off campus. Yes. I, I don't want to hog up all the time, George. If, yeah. <laughs> Hey, uh, yeah, thanks. Can you can everyone hear me okay? Audio's good. Okay, yeah, thanks, thanks for the presentation. I really like the synergies. Um, it felt like you're trying to tell a story. Um, one thing I was trying to understand better would be wh wh where do you see the densities of these things overlapping with each other? When you were working, were you working as individuals or were you working as a collective saying, hey, the space in between, um, you know, the monarch butterfly stations has to be away from the bees or or like w when the frogs come into it. We, we use looking at density and scale and how you could kind of spread that out. And if you could talk about that process, how you interact with each other, that would be really interesting. Uh, yeah. Um... Well, I can interject on that real quick. I, we all did. And, and actually, uh, uh, Nadia, Stephanie, and uh, Sarah were actually more did more research on that. What we have the advantage of on Pierce campus is lots of acreage. And we're right next to the LA River in the Chatsworth area. Though it's still part of the city, it is a little bit more open and there is some uh, open spaces between the campus and the river. And, and I'm, try I'm making, trying to make sure I understand the overlapping and we did discuss that, but also the synergy of some of the planters we built combine uh, the same plant material, the, the need for water availability, the, the trees and so on, interact with not only the birds, but the butterflies and the bees. So yeah, there was, there was overlapping, but we didn't see any interference between the species that would interfere with, with the uh, uh, eco habitats we were, we were establishing. I think yeah. that really the next step will be mapping out um, our bee colony, our frog colony. So finding definitely a balance because we don't want the butterflies next to the frogs or um, the birds next to the, to promote, you know, the ecosystem, of course. 
Yeah, thank you, Nadia. That that's where my head was at, right? Is there an optimal distance and if there's things that can mix, is there an opportunity to combine products and have less material? And then for the things that cannot mix, how do you weave them together and be respectful of all the goals that you have? And I was wondering just more when you were talking to stakeholders individually, were you saying, Hey, my distance is X and you know, hey, I have a partner, Y. That's kind of where my head was at. I can speak to that real quick. I don't, um, for my particular, for, for my sparrow houses, um, the nesting box, I put the planter in between and I thought to my, I was, it was about balance as well. Um, in the planter, I was thinking butterflies, uh, something, some, a pollinator in the planter because sparrows are mostly grain eaters and they're not going to eat the bugs or the bees that come by for the, um, for the planter. And so I, I tried to keep that in mind when it came to like the food web and what, what species eat for, for what species eat what and trying to keep that separate and I think what Nadia touched on was um, really defining what their locations are and where each planter would be most effective as far as keeping balance and, and that understanding. Yeah thank you. Um, I have another question unless anyone wants to jump in with more there. Go for it George. Yeah, um, I really like the thought about recycled material and like avoiding landfill. So I wonder, you know, if, if, if folks can lean into that, like what opportunities is there? Is there waste streams at the college that you would propose to tap into? And then, yeah. uh, sorry, I'll, I'll stop there. I've got sorry. a lot of questions. <laughs> well, for me, um, the recycling, um, We'll start with the kids. Um, I envision having this project for high schools or middle schools um, as a summer project. Um, and it can be different things. It doesn't have to be a bee house. It could be a little planter. Um, it could be a different um, animal um, house, but it would start with the kids because um, they seem to really enjoy nature and still have that, um, you know, that that um, attachment to the earth. And then they can bring it home and share it with the parents. Um, so for me, it would be starting with high schools and middle schools as a fun summer project, um, but then develop into more um, spreading it to the grown-ups. If I, if I may tag on, I'm sorry, George, you brought up a point that I was kind of eager to bring up myself, but um, this project is begging to use reclaimed materials. It really is. Um, the wood, uh, papers, all that sort of thing. Um, so what George mentioned about waste streams, and that is, I mean, I, I'm assuming that can include construction demolition materials, George, stuff like that. I, yeah, I mean, I was some of the examples around soda cans and, you know, toilet rolls. I imagine Pierce College was through a lot of them, like just on a daily basis, right? So I was wondering if there was a holistic campus where you could say, hey, as part of our own um, college level sustainability, we're going to divert this material and avoid, you know, landfill and recycling. So that, that's kind of where my head, at, my head was at with the question. Mm -hmm. I think for some of our projects, it's something that is still like a further step for us. So for example, for the wetland planner, we're still looking at different materials that may be more sustainable as opposed to using like plastic to line it so that the water doesn't drain too quickly um, and finding organizations that may have resources that we can use to get recycled materials or something more organic that can be used. And for my project, I use the paper, uh, the toilet paper rolls. Um, my idea, it's not to have a bee house that will be there forever. When it rains, if it's um, biodegradable, if it comes off the tree and if it um, break, 
you know, that's fine. Um, I'm not trying to make something that will stay forever. So it's recyclable, but also biodegradable. All of my materials were used from um, salvage materials. They were all from other construction projects. Um, I mean, I, I know that Pierce College has a welding department and that would be a great opportunity, any scrap metal. I mean, all of mine was made with scrap metal and 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 scrap materials. So that's a great idea to partner with them. Hey, that, uh, George and, oh. Sorry, no, go ahead. I don't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, just uh, the mention of, of the recycled materials and construction materials. And uh, Pierce College being a community college, there's a lot of students that are in or from the construction industry. And the availability of waste material for the planter box, the wood, is abundant. So I would think an outreach to just some of the local contractor, and I'm a contractor myself, so I I would happily provide any waste material. And for our planners, they take such little material that uh, even collecting it and storing it probably wouldn't be a major problem to have if we were gonna start producing these in, uh, in a little more abundance. Well, wonderful. I, I'm uh extremely excited to see this project. I love how it brings in the whole of the local region as well as brings in the community and uh, has potential to continue and to grow in exactly those ways. So uh, thank you all so much.